Hello everyone, uh, today we are talking about how to show the pectoralis major muscle in amyloid projection in mammography. As always, let me say that there are many factors to be taken into account. First of all, the correct positioning, which must be adjusted through the anatomy of the breast, um, of the thorax, of the patient, important heart compliance or uh, the presence of uh, joint pathologies, important also even if this subject is somehow neglected, let's say, in mammography, her posture. Now a brief summary of the radiographic anatomy of the major lateral oblique projection. The latissimus dorsi should, when possible, be present with this triangular shape. The pectoralis major muscle should, when possible, be convex uh, and very standard in the superior inferior direction, up to the PNL posterior nipple line, possibly with this uh, rounded tail. The posterior inferior quadrant must be shown. It is one of the most important quality criteria, even if it is not expressly indicated in the guidelines. It's that portion which is above and somewhat posterior to the IMF. Uh, I'd like to emphasize the need to show the complete retromammary space of which the pectoralis major partially represents, as you see, the posterior wall. It is crucial to document it to the fullest because it may be the site of lesions. Take a look at this image too. Shape with, at the upper level, with the latissimus dorsi behind, with at the middle level and at the inferior one, with uh, this rounded tail, uh, which is uh, uh, corresponds to this anatomical part. Um, this is the retromammary space, uh, which is actually drawn wider than is usually indicated, but it is a useful simplification, as we will see in these lessons. What do I need to know in order to show on the image the pressurized smile muscle in a mellow projection? These are the questions I'll try to answer in this lesson. Is the harder detector right? Is the puzzle dimension I chose right? Have all the tissues been brought onto the detector and stretched, I mean, well spread to the fullest? Are medial and lateral deep tissues parallel to each other, is the pectoralis major muscle shape the best achievable? Let's start with these examples. Uh, the first image does not even look like as an MLO. There is a cut off of the superior portion, detector is too low, that is to say patient too high on the detector, and the axillary tail is not well stretched forward. Okay, it should form a kind of triangle. Uh, this is how it should have been. Um, we will see in the next lesson the correct positioning of arm and shoulder. In image two, the detector is too high. You see, uh, this is how it should have been. Again, it means arm and shoulder are far too back. In image three, there is an improper use of the puzzle. Uh, it was used the uh, bigger one instead of the uh, smaller one. Okay. Uh, even if some upper tissue is missing, um, you see, the muscle shape is absolutely adequate. But images of this kind are not nice to look at. All this tissue is useless for diagnostic purposes and represents an undue radiation exposure. 
Some patient, same projection here. In both cases, the retro memory space has been documented to the full, as you can see. In the first one, however, using the larger puzzle has created some trouble in positioning and in spreading of the deep tissue, which is not sufficient. There is a difference in size of the two breasts, as you can see, and is due to the smaller pixel effect induced by the use of the larger, the bigger puzzle. Uh, we'll speak about up and out maneuver in the next lesson. How do we bring all the deep tissues onto the detector? You know that I recommend the Taba uh, maneuver in my position in school. The patient is at 45, 50 degrees medial to the detector. You push, as you see, the lateral tissue towards the hand that will take the wall breast firmly like that. Then you guide the patient forward without any rotation. This gives the certainty to get all the lateral deep tissue onto the detector. And what about the medial deep tissues? You have to make the patient rotate her hips and feet towards the detector, that is to say, laterally, until the nipple is in profile. This has to be done after positioning arm and shoulder, the topic of the next lesson. The rotation gives the certainty to reach the medial deep tissue and to bring them onto the detector. If you have not been successful in taking all the lateral tissue in your hand, or if folds are formed between these tissues and the detector, well, these folds can be very important, as you can see here and here. Uh, reading the retromammary space is not easy here for the uh, radiologist. So, folds like that are to be eliminated. We have to pick all lateral tissue up in our hand. We have to check that no folds are formed behind uh, the breast, which is the lateral part, the one resting on the detector. And we do it running our hand along superior inferior direction. Then we have to smooth the tissue behind the thorax posteriorly like that. Anyway, about artifacts, you can find, if you like, a series of four videos on this channel. Are the lateral and medial deep tissues in parallel with each other? It may seem to you insignificant. On the contrary, it is very important. Positioning in mammography is not art, it is science. Compare then those two images, right and left, same patient. The media and lateral sides are of the same dimensions, okay? Therefore, it is a must to put them in parallel to each other, so to get the nipple in profile and a correct documentation of both sides. And the left image, a rotation of the breast directed, in this case, majorly, is due to a positioning mistake. The nipple is not in profile, but there is more muscle on the left than on the right, you could say. Uh, you see. Then why is the left image not correct and the right one is? Because in the left, more lateral deep tissue has been documented, okay, but at the expense of the mere deep tissue, which is partially missing. Remember, there is a tissue cut off in the rotation direction. This is not correct. But there is more. You see, there is a kind of superimposition of tissue on the anterior profile of the gland that makes not an easy reading for the radiologist again. The pectoralis shape shown on the mammography image is 
extremely viable and dependent on multiple factors, not only anatomical. Image 1. Pitoralis muscle, fret-like in the middle and few parts. It is usually associated with patient uh, with uh, pectus excavatum. But please, look at the images 2 and 3. In this case, the not proper shape of the muscle was determined only by the improper positioning, as you can see in the third image, same patient. For a given radiography competence and uh, experience, one can see pectoralis my muscle differing in anatomy, age, pathology of the patient, in the present or not of the latissimus dorsi, in the gap between passion and detector or not, in density. Uh, in image 3, you can see a case of a physiological sarcopenia, a decrease in muscle fibers that occurs with age. You could even find uh, uh, a special case like this with a stepped muscle profile, no pathology reported, not present in the other side. In the next video, we will talk about how to get greater width in the anterior posterior direction of the pectoralis maya at the upper, middle and lower levels. I will upload the next video in a few days. Hope you have enjoyed this one. So, bye-bye uh, and see you.